Morning, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Mark, that was quite the week, wasn't it? I, I guess let's start with the aftermath to the dissolution of the, the European Super League. Over the last 48 hours or so, which club has done the best job of salvaging their own reputation? None. <laughs> well, they haven't, have they? Because to get, to get there in the first place, I think one, one of the things which, which I don't think too many people have caught upon is that the, literally just the owners, it, it would appear only, only the owners and no one else at any of the football clubs would have seemed to have known exactly what's happening while, you know, they've had all these secret meetings, etc. I'm not even sure if... Uh, you know, the chief exec at Liverpool, Billy, I'm not sure even sure if, if he was in on it because the, the, th the reason being that surely, surely all these other guys at the football clubs who are at the kind of cold face, for want of a better description, would have said to the owners, really, are you sure? Do you realise what kind of mayhem this is going to cause? So I think, you know, that they're, they're all, all, have, all have been as bad as each other. And when you look at it now, I mean... You get six billionaires around the table. They're not talking about coffee and donuts, are they? They're just talking about making more money, and that's obviously what the whole thing was. And it was, it feels to me like it was uh, the Americans' way of trying to make European football an American sport, as in no no relegation, etc. Loads and loads of money, um, same teams in it, week in, week out. It did seem, if you go back to last summer, that Liverpool were the Premier League club with the best relationship with their American or, or non-native owner. That's yeah. obviously changed quite a bit. But at the same time, is there any credit in the bank that allows them to get that relationship back? Yeah, yeah, I think there is. I mean, you know, as, as a person in life, you can you can forgive, and I think you should forgive, but you can, can never, ever forget. And I think that's what the stays that they're at. Um, obviously, they messed up with the furlough. Uh, which was quickly put right after obviously everybody went mad about it. Two days, two days later, was was all sorted. And I think generally, you know, FSG, uh, John Henry, etc., have really seriously um, sorted the club out. New stand, going to build another one, of course, at the old Anfield Road end. Manager's been brilliant. He's had money for players, and they've been successful. And I think part of that is because you know they have the old, they have their own franchise as well. In America, in terms of sport, so they know how sport uh, works, how it happens. People get injured, players lose form, all all those kind of things. So, listen, I don't expect that to, to see them any time at Liverpool soon. But yeah, I think I think generally, generally, I think they've been okay. You'll get the odd percentage of people say, "Oh, get rid of them, sell up, and all that." But you know, the problem with that is, you know, th these guys pay the wages, and you know, if you if if you really kind of piece somebody off like 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 John Henry, he might go to club, all right, okay, fine, if that's the way that it is, uh, I want you to, to sell Salah tomorrow, and when Van Dyke's fit, I want you to sell him and recoup some of my money. So you've got to be very careful and just play the game, I think. I get the supporters, I get the anger, I get the ire, I get the fact that, you know, oh, I'm going to chuck me uh, season ticket in for next season and all that kind of thing. I don't see many people doing that, though. And you've hit the nail on the head there with the hypocrisy that is at the heart of all of this this week. The distaste with greed in football, but at the mm. same time, the satisfaction that comes from spending £50 million on a new player. Yeah, well, that's, 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 where, that's where we're at. And I mean, you know, you, you've got to kind of look at the Premier League as well. When they, they came in, all bells and whistles in, what, 92, and everyone went, well, I'm not too sure about this, but in fairness to them, you know, that the, the big thing about football across here is, is the pyramid system. It's the fact that, you know, the Premier League money does filter down into the championship and into dibs one and two and, and uh, all the kind of semi-pro leagues as well. So that's from the, from the Premier League's point of view. They've actually done really, really well. But I think it's like anything in life with, with, with a lot of people. If you've got a nice big house, what do you want? Well, I want a bigger house. You want a really good salary. Well, actually, I want a bigger salary. And I think that's just a little bit of life, isn't it, in all honesty? Is, is it a bit like, um, I mean, we're all over the place with the analogies this morning, but like people have got mm. that view of how the sausage gets made. We'll run with that one for now. And, uh, you know, nobody liked the look of it. And now suddenly the door's been shut. 
the plate has been served and everybody's kind of happy. Do you do you expect everybody to just move on very quickly from this, Mark? And and not, like another iteration of this coming down the track, notwithstanding. But do you expect in the short term that fans just close the door on it? That's enough. That's done. Let's get on with supporting the club. Yeah, you know, I think I think another analogy. I think the door might be just a little bit ajar, <laughs> but but probably more shut than open. But I think because because fans, I mean, well, you, you just saw all all the protests, and you just saw the way that everybody, basically everybody apart from the billionaires, were were, were just saying no, this this cannot happen. I mean, the, the stance of the guy at Real Madrid is just mm. it's just pathetic. But of course, we know. That I think I think they're nearly a billion euros in debt, so they're going to vote for anything that brings them more dough. And, and Barcelona as well, financially in, in, in a poor position. But yeah, I think I think it's kind of maybe a good thing. It's not many games to go in terms of the rest of the season. Everybody who obviously will be tuning in and watching what happens. You know, Premier League, FA Cup, Champions League, all those kind of things. I don't think there'll be any sanctions before the end of the season, if there are any sanctions. And then we've got a breathing space of probably about six weeks. And I think we'll we'll all start again. But everybody will have that little kind of little worm in their head, which is, well, what happens next? What what so they've not got this, what do you think they might do in the meantime? But what do you um, what do you think, Mark? Um I think I think they'll sit on their hands for a while. Um, and I mean, Perez say, you know, it's not over. It's not. It's not this. It's, well, well, good luck if you've got if, if you've got four teams, Senor Perez, have your little competition and play each other thirty times in the year and get on with it, and we'll forget about you. But yeah, I think I think just generally, everybody in the football world will now just come on. Let's start playing football and, and let's get back on it. How concerned were you on Monday night when you heard Jurgen Klopp speak, thinking at this time that the Super League was going to go ahead? Were you worried that he was going to walk over this? I, well, I wasn't worried, but of course, you know, he's he's very honest, and he, and his and his interview was really, really honest, and he could tell that he was peed off as well, wasn't he? Because he'd he'd heard nothing, and this goes back to the fact that it, they really did keep it a secret, which is unbelievable in the world that we live in. I mean, look at us this morning, zooming and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, but I think he's. Thing with Jurgen Klopp, I think one day he, he will walk away and he, that will be his own choice. I don't ever really see him getting sacked by the uh, by FSG or anything like that. And he's very much in charge of his own destiny. So, and he's earned that as well. But um, I think it was just another thing that he's thinking, oh my goodness, I'm trying to win football games here and I'm trying to get in the top four. We're trying to get into the Champions League. For next season, it's almost kind of yeah. This is what I think. Now deal with it and do one. Mm. Like of all the managers of that of those twelve clubs that were due to be part of this, he's probably the one that you put above all others. To, maybe because he comes from Germany, maybe because he he does seem to be a really good man. That he he's the person that might have been affected most by this. And mm. by extension, Mark, you wonder if this will have a lingering impact on his longevity at Liverpool. Yeah, and I think that's a really, really good um, statement as well, the, the longevity thing. But, right, so let, let's go back to the own. Let's say go back to, to John Henry. And um, I presume he's had a converse, conversation with Klopp. I'd be very, very surprised if he hasn't, because that would really, would really upset Jurgen Klopp, obviously, because it's like he's not in the loop. But I think he might have had a conversation, I would hope so. And I think I think he might say to him, OK, Jurgen, you know, seriously messed up. Um, right in terms of next season, players in, players out. What we're looking at, you know, what who do you want to sell? Who do you want? Would you like to buy? And I would ma imagine as well that he would now think, look, I, I really need to do the manager a favour. And maybe if he'd said to him, look, you've got eighty million to spend, he might just say, well, actually, make that a hundred. So you know, it's it's life. That's that's how it works. And um, we would have already kind of have. Uh, people and players that they would like to kind of take into the football club if, if possible and get the deal over the line and, and and maybe now he's he's probably got more money to spend I, I would I would have thought so somehow what punishment of any do you think would be fitting from the Premier League standpoint now um I don't know really I, th I think I think the thing with this Premier League as well that they everybody knows how how badly they need those top six teams um they might give them a fine give them a little slap on the wrist i don't i don't expect 
anything too drastic or draconian at all because that's not really how the Premier League works. And bottom line is um, that they need these teams. And if they suddenly said, well, you know, your results for this season are cancelled, you can imagine Sky, BT, BBC, everybody's going to have something to say about it and obviously want some more money back and it's it oh it comes back to money doesn't it it's always life is just always nearly always comes back to money so i don't i, I don't think they're going to get a major slap to be honest with you yeah i think you're probably going to be right on that um the probably the 500th most important sports story of the week was jose Mourinho, uh, a certain manager <laughs> losing his job <laughs> Uh, at Tottenham Hotspur. They obviously played a Carabao Cup final this weekend against Manchester City. But mm. on Jose, we were having a conversation about this early in the week and how his career and his, his end of days at Tottenham was just kind of a sad reflection on Jose that he'd kind of lost that vigour and he kind of lost even that anger that kind of besmirched his time at Manchester United a little bit. Uh, what was yeah. your feeling when, when you saw him lose his job on Monday? Uh, no, not a surprise. Mm. I think... Um, I think this will something, be something to do with money as well. I would imagine that if he'd been in charge for the Carabao Cup final and, and won it, um, he'd have got a seven-figure sum in terms of a bonus. So, you know what Daniel Levy's like, he wouldn't, wouldn't give you a last pee on the plate. So I think that was part and parcel, parcel of it. I think also the way that you know, everyone keeps saying Tottenham aren't a good watch, which, which they aren't particularly. And, and, and I think his biggest problem has been at Tottenham is defensively, which is really, really unusual for Jose because, you know, when you look at his teams over the, uh, how many teams he's had, he, he starts from the back in the way that he builds and then he goes forward in terms of the players that he brings in. And so that's that's not really happened for him either. And you just felt with him, it was, it was only ever a matter of time. He always seemed to be a couple or two or three defeats away from, from, from getting the tin tack from, from Mr Levy. You, we've just been like spent a lot of time discussion about the the decisions at the uh, top table of some of the top clubs in Europe. So I suppose the answer maybe to my next question is who knows. But uh, that notwithstanding, is is he done, Mark? As a from what we've seen over the last five six years of Jose Mourinho as a top coach at a top club, who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think he's done in uh, in England. Um, I don't know if he's done in Europe. I, I think he has. He probably has a little bit more respect across Europe because, you know, Milan and, and what he did there and obviously the Portuguese teams and everything. So whether whether, whether he wants another job or not, I don't know, but, but I would think so because I just think, you know, whatever you think about him is he loves football. And I've met him a few times and away from football, he's like, good company mm. and very kind of taking the mickey and stuff out of himself with different stories and and, and one thing and another i remember and uh remember when he was at chelsea and he sold david louise to uh psg mm. and, um gary lineker who's, who's quite close certainly a lot closer than i would ever be to, to jose i think he texted him and, he, and i think he just said something like wow what what a sale that is and 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 uh, jose texted him back and went yeah aren't i a genius exclamation mark exclamation mark <laughs> exclamation mark yeah yeah uh, it's funny because you, you did get even a sense of that there was the clip of him that he put up in his own instagram account where the sky reporter was doorstepping him at his car to see could he get a reaction out of him and he actually saw at that point a human being which you don't often get a, a an insight to with jose like owen said his mentality is yeah. sometimes slightly different to that but has he, he has he even outside of where he might land has he lost touch mark or is that overstretching things a bit with yeah. the way the modern game has gone no i don't i don't i don't think he's lost touch i just don't think i just don't think um he had he had the players and, and i think you know because I bore everyone about this, recruitment's the biggest thing in, in football now after your manager, really seriously is. And, you know, you, you look at Barcelona and Madrid and, and they've got spectac they've got that spectacularly wrong, especially Barcelona. So that's why they're in a mess. But And Tottenham was a little bit the same. It's, it's you know, if you bring players in, they've got to be better than the players you've got in there. And that's, that's why you bring them in anyway. And I'm not quite sure whether some of the players that he's brought in have been of the quality... Mm that you would expect from a, from a Jose Mourinho side. And when you say, if you, if you compare his best team at Chelsea and look now at Tottenham, um, 
Well, there is no comparison, is there? there absolutely, totally, is no comparison. I mean, that, that that team at Chelsea that he had, or teams, uh, um, they were all all outstanding teams, and they, most of those players in the first eleven would have got him in any team across Europe. Who's a good fit to replace him? Pochettino. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's funny, and it? it's like it's, it's like when a team when a team in the Premier League gets relegated, it's like uh, about to get relegated or in a mess. They say, who should replace the manager? It's always Sam Allardyce, isn't it? The bottom, <laughs> at the bottom end of the table. Um, I don't know. They're, they're talking about the, the German boy, aren't they? Yeah, Nagelsmann, yeah. Nagelsmann. So, which we just don't, we don't know, do we? Because the thing is, we, he'll come in and what do you do as a manager straight away is, yeah, everyone's great. It's this, and you know, I work with what I've got. And after a few weeks, you're looking and you're knocking on the de- on the chairman's door and saying, mm, mm. actually, we need this, we need that, we need we need whatever. I mean, the great thing for someone like Nagelsmann will be that his salary will be unbelievable in comparison to what it is. Mm. Um, so it's very, sometimes it's very very difficult to say no because you might think, you know what. If I only do a year or 18 months, get paid off, off into the sunshine, have a bit of gardening leave and then get another job. But that's, you know, these guys are fortunate that they're in that position. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is like fourth or fifth favourite to get it. Is he better off staying put? Yeah, stay put. Brendan's done well. And, uh, you know, when when they're all fit, excuse me, at Leicester, he he has not got some players. And I'll go back to my, my point before about recruitment. Their recruitment's been excellent. If if they had a if they had a fire sale at Leicester, my God, they they would make an unbelievable amount of money. So no, just stay there. And I think certainly with Brendan, ostensibly runs the club. Um, you know, he he, decide, he makes most of the major decisions there. And and look for a, for a manager, that's kind of absolute utopia. And also, I think that obviously, you know, the very sad thing about. Um, the, the guy who obviously owned the club originally who died and, mm. and stuff in the helicopter crash. And, and I think what they've done since the family, they've, they've gone to Brendan and gone, here you go, Brendan, you know, you, you, this is, this is your baby and um, deal with it. And he's, he's, he's done really, really well. I mean, Bre- Brendan's not daft. Brendan likes Brendan. So, which is absolutely fine. I don't, I don't really have a problem with that. Um, but it's all, it, he, he's made some very, very clever moves. If you think about it, I think he was, Partially dealt with at Liverpool in terms of when he got sacked. I don't mean the fact that he was that he lost his job, just the fact that it was Goodison and they just they just hoid him straight out, which was I think it could have been a bit classier over, over stuff like that. But he's uh, Celtic was obviously good. He picked his moment to go to Leicester, even though all the Celtic fans obviously said, "Oh, it's a downward step," which which obviously it isn't. I think he got a, a brand new spanking contract not too long ago because his name was mentioned for all sorts of other jobs. And, you know, good, good, good luck to him. Just one last point on Jose. There's a chance mm. he goes back into punditry immediately for the time being. Does he immediately improve Sky Sports' output as a pundit in there? Does he improve it? Um, he, well, he's, he's obviously a fantastic name, mm. but I don't think you ever really see Jose. Even then, when he's there as a pundit, there's there's almost this kind of thing which just stops him. Probably sometimes I feel like saying what, what he really wants to say, and and you know, Cara and obviously Gene Evans stuff. I mean, they they've been brilliant for, for Sky Sports and what, and what have you. If you knew if you knew that Jose was on the telly tonight for Sky, would you turn on, on if you weren't going to normally turn on anyway? Probably. I'm not really. Sh- I'm not really sure that you would. I probably would. Yeah. I mean, I, I I do take your point though. I also think there'll be kind of interesting conversations now that uh, Gary Neville and Roy Keane have been having a pop off him over the last while that uh, might make for a little yeah. Awkward. But he's not. He's, he's not daft. He knows that's that that that's the way that it is. I mean, when I used to do match the day, I mean, I I, I pissed off so many uh, <laughs> managers. But when you meet them, most most of the time when you meet them after, they're not in the job anyway. And and you know, the <laughs> next thing is that the same to you. Look, if you hear of anyone needing the manager, give me a shout. So it's it's just it's just the way that that football is, isn't it? And and every everybody everybody really seriously accepts it. Yeah, uh, just on, on the Carabao Cup final. Sorry, very very quickly, Mark. Before we mm. wrap, like I mean, after losing to Chelsea last weekend, I know nobody really cares about the Carabao Cup, but it would all of a sudden go from a quadruple to a double at best if they lose on Sunday. 
little bit of pressure. Yeah, little, little. Mm. I would, I would say, I would say five percent pressure. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you know, I, th I think he just obviously they got Champions League next week, haven't they? City. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't really get this thing about not picking your best team. You know, and and and, and it will be the first trophy of the season. Pick your best team. Like get get the silverware in the cabinet and then deal with next week and the rest of the season when when you need to deal with it. And you know you can only ever talk about it, your time when you played and stuff. And, and I mean every every League Cup final that we played in, we we always played our best team. And it wasn't even I know football's changed and everything. And I'm not a dinosaur, but it was. And Bob Paisley's thing was well, well if you don't pick your best team and you get beat, you'll be forever wondering. What would have happened if I picked my best team? And Pep's done it a couple of times. We know he did it, Leon, in the Champions League, and obviously did it in the in the FA Cup semi um, last week, a few days ago. And I, I don't really get it, and I don't really get the fact that you know you need to keep your play all your players happy. Look, you know, pick 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 your best team, and if they're knocking on your door and they say, "Why am I not on the team?" and you've won the cup, they go, "Well, that's why because we've just won it," and basically get on with it. Thanks a million, Mark. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Mark Lawrence on the line there. Uh, really interesting stuff, as always. 8.35 on this Friday morning. Lots of comments coming in, including this one. Owen from Alfie Kiernan on YouTube. My immersion switch is uh, locked on the heating position. Should I be worried, he asks his fellow YouTube commenters. Yes. Sorry, I've been calling the uh, businesses all morning and no one has rung back. The hot press is like a sauna. Thanks. Well, that's good to hear. Obviously, the hot press is doing its job if it feels like a sauna and mm. a hot press should feel like a sauna at its very best but yeah you should be very concerned would you open the door and maybe let some of that heat circulate around the house no that's might bad might serve a dual, dual function a day after earth day you're gonna just let heat leak around the house but no he sir. can't you see he can't he's, in, a, he's in, a, in an odd position in that he can't actually turn it off We'll get some dry, get a, get a, a horse of wet clothes and pop them outside and get some use out of that That's leaking immersion. That's a good idea, yeah. Or one of those little fans that operates on the on the heat itself and circulate the heat around the house while it's there. And I mean, keep calling the businesses. It's not even business hours yet, so somebody be out here. I'm sure there's an emergency number uh, somewhere. Right, uh, if you have any comments on um, on Alfie's immersion there or anything else you have this morning, do keep them coming into us. Alan Quinn will be up with us uh, very shortly, but it is... 8.36 on this Friday morning. John Duggan will be with us next on OTB AM. He's going to bring us the latest sports news. But before all of that, yesterday afternoon at his weekly press conference, uh, Owen asked the Brighton boss, Graham Potter, about Aaron Connolly's development so far this season. Next, Aaron Sheehan. Hi, Graham. Owen Sheehan here from OTB Sports in Dublin. Just on uh, Aaron Connolly, uh, I know he's having his injury problems at the moment. Uh, but could I just ask you how he's progressed in general this season when you've seen him on the training pitch and he's got onto the pitch on match day? Yes, he's progressing well. I, I think when we talk about whether people progress well or not, we, we, we think it's just automatically linked to positive performances. Sometimes it's about how he's developing as a person, how he's dealing with being a Premier League um, footballer, um, and, he's, and he's doing that doing that well he's taking responsibility he's um he understands that he's he's got some things that he that he can improve and he and he also knows the things that he does well and and it's about helping him with both um he's uh he's he's trying his best he's had a frustrating season for for a few reasons but He's always fighting with the team. He's always with the boys. And um, while it's like that, we want to try and help him. What are some of the things off the pitch that he can improve on, Dan? I know you've said in the past he's quite hard on himself. Well, he's he's only young. He's only a young man, so um, he's he's learning. I look back to myself when I was his age, and I didn't know a lot of things, and maybe thought I did. Um, but he's, 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 as I said before, he's taking responsibility. He's uh, understanding himself more and more, understanding what it takes to be um, a Premier League footballer, how you have to deal with setbacks, you have to deal with uh, disappointment and all those things, criticism that comes your way. It's, um, if anything, they're the most important times of your, of your career and your life. It's, it's how you manage those disappointments. 
but at the same time he has to constantly remember also that, that he does a lot of things really really well and he's got some attributes that are exciting, exciting for him, exciting for us and just like any young person, young player especially in the forward positions it's about balancing the, the, the needs of the team and him and his development as a human being and trying to help him you know, have a, have a really, really good career.